Welcome to Let's Talk About It, a podcast gets a platform for real talk, real people, real topics, real conversations. Please subscribe, like, comment, enjoy this journey, and enjoy this ride. Welcome to this week's episode. Welcome everybody to Let's Talk About It. A podcast gives a platform for real talk, real people, real topics, real conversations. First and foremost, I want to introduce my, my, my great guest today. Thank you so much for people who have subscribed, the people who are watching this for the first time. Please subscribe, please like, please comment. The more likes and comments I get, it puts me in a different algorithm. Now, today's guest... I met this young lady. Actually, I seen her on TikTok. You know, what I mean, she, she's one of the hardest workers I've ever seen in my life. And, and I do, I have, I have taken some of your stuff. I have, I really have. <laughs> you sharing know? is caring. Sharing is caring. Exactly. <laughs> my guest is my guest today is Dee. We're gonna talk about health and wellness, and she has an amazing, amazing story about health and wellness. Uh, she is, and after we. Dig deep into her health and wellness journey. I'm going to ask about her uh, TikTok videos, her dancing ones. <laughs> no, <laughs> later on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, I actually like those. I actually <laughs> like those. D, we tried this earlier. You said uh, your Saturday is doing good. I'm happy for you. I, I know you had a little, you know, air conditioning problems. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's all good. So let's get into what, what motivated you to start your health and wellness journey? You know, it was really about wanting to be around to see my kids accomplish all of the things that they are accomplishing and wanting to really be the best version of myself, right? Because when you are the best version of yourself, it helps you in all of the different areas of life. And so I just was, I told myself, you know, I I have to promise and commit to myself that I'm going to stay on this journey. It doesn't matter if I trip up. It doesn't matter if I fall down. It doesn't matter if I plateau. I just need to keep putting one foot in front of the other and doing that for me. So that's really the reason. I wanted to make sure that I was going to be around for a long, long time. See my okay. kids grow. Yeah. Now, was there like, like like any like certain reasons why like a special something happened or it was mm-hmm. just it was in your mindset? You know, I have been like going in and out of the gym or participating in different fitness type activities for a long, long time, but I never really continued forward. Some of it had to do with like relationships that weren't very healthy. Some of it had to do with self-doubt. Some of it had to do with just mentally, just not really feeling like I was strong as a person, you know, I was feeling like I was just stagnant in my job and uh, relationships were just not really, it just wasn't it at the time. So I think that I just really needed to do some self-reflection and say, okay, what's one thing that you have control over yourself? I don't have control over what's happening with my job. I don't have control over this relationship and what this other person is doing. I can pull myself out of it and I can focus on me. Started focusing so on myself. Into, uh, that, I love that. So, so when you started getting into the gym, like, you know, you, you said like you had like outside interference, relationships, jobs, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Cause trust me, I totally understand that, you know, uh, like, you know, I got deep into it because I lost my daughter. Mm. And I just like, I had to like, it was like that mental going. It's like, I just kept on grinding and grinding and grinding. And it it, it actually saved me. They really, yeah. really did. So let's get into what are, what are some of the biggest challenges besides that you faced while managing your weight and health? Some of the biggest challenges, you know, sometimes people, including myself, want to see things immediately. And the reality of the situation is that's not how it works. You have to stay consistent with things in order to see the results that you are looking for. So I would start something and I would do really, really good at it all the way up to, you know, a year. 
And then something would happen and I would fall off, maybe not go for a day or two. And then that day or two would turn into a week. And that week would turn into a couple of weeks. And so then that's when the mental part started really, you know, messing with me because I'm like, uh, you've already missed this amount of time. You may as well just, you know, don't worry about it, whatever. We'll get into it in the next month. This time around, it's been different. Something flipped in my brain that said, you got to keep pushing forward. It doesn't matter what is happening. You just have to keep pushing forward. And as we get a little bit further in, I'll share with you something that took place with me medically that really propelled me forward. It was like, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. Let's go back a little bit, right? Because a lot of people, right, when they start off, you know, some, like you said, they're not consistent and stuff like that. How was it for you when you first went, let's talk about the first 90 days. Like, how mm-hmm. was that consistently and mentally? Because that's the, the biggest part, the first 90 days. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, mm-hmm. how we, when January comes around, you know, yep. Yep. and then they come in, some, some only last 30 days. Yeah. But yeah. how was that for you mentally and, mm-hmm. and physically for the first mm-hmm. 90 days? I would say this time around, um, what really made this time around different is it was around COVID and everybody is like in their house, not really able to go anywhere. Um, You know, the cities were shut down and I live in Seattle and Seattle sometimes can be a little gray, you know, like throughout different times in the year. So if you're in your house, you cannot go anywhere. You look outside, it's gray. That starts to, again, mess with you mentally, right? So I have my son with me who is and has been an athlete since he was, since he came out, since he came out, been an athlete. He said, mom, let's do this together. He said that to me. My brain said, oh, Okay, this is what we are doing, and I, I haven't that. stopped since. I haven't stopped. So I love that. I love you know, that. It, and it doesn't mean that I haven't fell down. Even in that first ninety days, there were periods when I was like, ah, "It's still a lot. Things aren't really getting back to normal." But <clears throat> what it started to do for me is, it started to just make me feel good every day. Even if we only spent 30 minutes doing weights at home, it started to make me feel good every day. And it became more and more and more. And I just built on that. So besides your son being your support Mm -hmm. system, was there anybody else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So both of my parents, my sister, my daughter, my husband, all of them have said to me in different situations, on different days and times. We know you as the type of person that if you put your mind to something, you're going to do whatever you need to do to achieve that, right? So they all stood behind me. Uh, My daughter came to my cycling classes. You know, once things open back up, she came to my cycling classes. My dad, who just turned 71, in the front row of my cycling classes. Wow. He is somebody that I have looked up to when it comes to fitness and how you take care of yourself and just health overall for as long as I can remember, honestly. Uh, Retired fire lieutenant, 34 years, first black firefighter in the city of Renton, Washington, which is like, I just found this out. Like, I just found this out a couple of months ago, actually. And I was like, dad, that's, that's big. So to have somebody that's that close to you, because my parents had two daughters, my sister, three years younger than me and myself. And um, to have that, like, as, you know, somebody that you look up to uh, that just stays consistent with fitness and spent that many years in the fire service, that's, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. So. Hats off to him. Seriously. I I love that. Thank you. I love hearing stories like that. I mean, like. Because a lot of that's not talked about. Right, right. 
But we, so we need a lot of that. But I'm glad you had that that support system of your your husband, your son, your father, your mother. Um, that. Whew. What are some of the other lessons you've learned as as you've gotten into your fitness journey, especially as you got older, especially from let's start off from like what are the lessons you learned from COVID all the way up to now? What what's some mm-hmm. of the big lessons you've learned? Mm-hmm. I've learned that every day is a new start. You never have to be perfect. Always stay true to who you are and just put one foot in front of the other and keep pushing forward. Right. It's not just about the activity, the physical activity that you do. You also have to think about what are you putting into your body? You know, are you still eating, you know, a bunch of food that is not necessarily healthy for you and still wanting to see these results. Cause sometimes that can like play tricks on you. Right. And your mind, you're like, well, I'm doing all of these things. And then it becomes a circle. It becomes a circle and you start to feel down. And, uh, you know, for me, that's happened during my journey. 100% that's happened during my journey. Things happening outside of my fitness world in my job and you know, I'm like, I, I just mentally, I don't feel like I, I even want to go to the gym. I just don't really? really feel like I want to do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's been even in this past year, even in this past year. And um, I guess I just told myself now I'm still doing my cycling classes, but the lifting, which has made me as strong as I am, <clears throat> that was like at 50 percent of what I was used to doing. And I realized, no, you need to put yourself first. You need to think about you. Think about where you were when you started on this journey and how far you've come. And give yourself some grace and get back into it. And I told myself that's what I was going to do. And that's what I've been doing. It's been like, I don't know, maybe a couple of months now, you know, because for a part of the summer and the end of spring, I was not in the gym as much as I wanted to be. And it started to affect me mentally. And that's never good. Ever good. So, yeah. Dara, what do you think the difference of consistency is between your bike and your lifting weights? Mm. So it, this is, this is going to go, well, it will give you a glimpse into who I am as a person. Okay. For a good majority of my life, it was all about how is this person doing? How is that person doing? I want to make sure you're you're okay. I want to make sure that person's okay. And all during that time, I'm not thinking about myself, whether it was in a relationship or whatever. And when I step into the cycling room, which is a place that brings me a lot of peace and a lot of happiness, number one, because I'm helping other people. That is the reason that with my cycling, it's when I go there, I know for a fact that I am changing somebody's life. And they might look during class like, what is this girl doing and why is she doing it? But when class is over, D, thank you so much. I feel so good. I can't wait to come back. And, you know, that way of thinking is a little dangerous because again, I'm only thinking about other people, but that's never going to not be who I am. I gotcha. love people. I love giving to people and it just really brings me a lot of, a lot of happiness and joy. Hmm. So you're more of a giver. I'm more of a giver. Yeah. And I feel like I have been like that for my entire life, my entire life. How long have you been teaching your uh, cycle classes? Um, overall, gosh, I've been a cycle instructor for about 18 years. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. How'd you start that? (laughs) What was that? How'd you start being a cycling instructor? Yeah. So, you know, I said a little bit earlier that I kind of have gone in and out of different types of physical activities. And there was a period in time where I was feeling like really good about myself. And I started off slow, just walking. And 
And then it progressed to running. And I was like running the Pacific Northwest is one of the most amazing places to go running because it's so green and there's just so much to see, you know, sure. especially when it's like summer springtime. So um, my knees after some time said, mm-hmm, I don't think that pavement is our friend. And I had an old injury from playing soccer years ago and it just, it, it just was not going to allow me to. So that is how I got into cycling as a rider. And I just really, I remember very specifically, I had an instructor that had great music. She had great energy. She was uh, very uh, specific with the drills and made sure that people felt comfortable, go at your own pace. And I love music. Music is like my thing, you know. Um, I just have loved music forever, all kinds of music, honestly. And so okay. when you're on a bike for an hour, you got to have good music. You got to have good music. If you don't have good music, then it's like, you know, it's just not going to work. And I was like, I'm really liking this. Like, I'm really liking this. And I stayed consistent with it. And I was feeling like more energy and I was feeling happier. And I said, um, I think I could do this. Like, I think I could be an instructor. I need to find out what are the requirements? What do you need to do for certifications? And 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 do this. And I kind of stepped outside of my comfort zone a little bit. But sure. um, again, I like helping people and I enjoyed it so much and I love music so much. So I was like, I want to share myself and my music and my energy with all of these different people. And that's, that's really how I got into it. And um, it's just something that it's just, it's fun. It's fun, you know, and to see all of the people in the studio and oh yeah, to come full circle that instructor that I was talking about, she mm. taught at a specific gym and okay. I love that gym. And now here we are in 2024 and I'm the instructor teaching at that gym. That's amazing. So, I love yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, love yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. It's good. See, stuff. What does self-compassion and positive self-talk mean to you? Mm. What does that mean to you? Yeah. Overall? Yeah. Because that's deep. It, it Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I think sometimes, you know, my message today to my class was everybody has the ability to achieve the goals that they set. You have that power within yourself. It is far easier to doubt yourself if you plan for something and that does not happen. Then to say, you know what, I'm going to dust my shoulders off. I'm going to pick myself back up and I'm going to push forward. That's harder. It's easier to just be like, oh, that didn't work. So, you know, it didn't work. For me, when I tell myself I can and I will, I can and I will over and over and over again, regardless of what that goal is that I'm trying to reach. It's not that I set a time limit to it. I just know that that is something that I want to accomplish. I want to accomplish that for whatever the reason might be. So I tell myself that I can. And I tell myself that I will. You are going to do that. I set many goals for myself. And if I do not reach that many goal, I'm like, that's okay. Keep pushing forward. Keep pushing like forward. That. Yes. You know, knowing that you are worthy and knowing that you are worth it. In realizing that you are the only you in this world, to me, uh, yes. Yes. is very powerful. Yes. There's only one you. Yes. Right? Yes. Please stay. And- Please keep talking. <laughs> Please. I just feel like you need to let yourself shine through. Be who you are. Every single day is not going to be perfect. Every single interaction that you have with people is not going to be pleasant. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That's life. That's life. Mm-hmm. You just have to believe in who you are and be you because there's only one. And I think that's so special. And I say that to my class, classes all the time. You are the only you. 
Mm. And you know what? You know, I, I mean, I'm actually sorry to interrupt you there, but no, cool. you are right when you say there's only one you. But that's very tough in the gym world. It's even on the cycling, when you step into the gym, um, because you said earlier, I actually said in the introduction that you know you says regardless of body type or size, everybody's worthy. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that don't feel worthy, no matter what. They, they 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 can get messages from you or inspiration and stuff like that, especially with someone who has size, and mm-hmm. they go through that, but and they stay away from the gym. So off topic question about that one. Mm-hmm. How do you think about? That when I say that to you about those people, they 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 worry about their size. They they don't have the the confidence in themselves about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. How you feel about that? Yeah, uh, that was me. That was me at one point. You know, um, I say start off small. You do not have to do all of the things in the first week of your journey because that's exactly what it is—a journey. Mm-hmm. And it's not just a journey, it's your journey, right? So start off small. Maybe look into something like a jump rope. Maybe look into something like resistance bands, small five-pound weights. And while you're at home watching a TV show or maybe a time that you would be on your phone or something like that, Think about you and the goals that you would like to accomplish and put yourself first and maybe just walk in place for a little bit. Maybe just do two sets of arm raises with five pound weights or two pound weights. Maybe start off with something small like doing 25 sit ups in the day. Whatever that is that you choose, just stay consistent with it. That's all you have to do. Just stay consistent with it. And I tell you what, there's something that consistency does for the mind and for your mental health. Mm -hmm. It lets you know that you can. It lets you know that if you just put yourself first, one foot in front of the other, that you can accomplish things. And they can be little small things. It doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about just realizing that you can. You do not have to go full force to the gym and try to go do all of the things, right? There's so Mm -hmm. many different ways that you can learn about fitness now, especially with just technology in general. There's a lot of different apps that you can have on your phone that will give you a small workout goal. You say, you know, I want to do this by this day. And they can give you in these apps, they can give you a, you know, a workout plan that you stay consistent with and put you on a six week plan or a two month plan or something. And you can do that all from the comfort of your own home. You do not have to go to the gym. You don't have to. I love it. Uh, That leads me into my my next. Hey, you know what? And that's a big deal. And, and that goes for men too, men and women. It's, it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. But that leads me to my next question uh, about memorable moments, a breakthrough moment. So I'm going to piggyback off of, uh, you said, right, you went through this with, with, with the size and weight in the beginning. Mm-hmm. What was your breakthrough moment that you can share with everybody that can probably help them to overcome that? Mm-hmm. Um. So, you know, with one of the things that, you know, cardio does for you is it helps you build up your endurance. You know, you're, you're, you're getting a lot of oxygen flowing. You might sweat a lot, all of those things, cardio just in general, which on the bike, like if you're just riding a bike and not doing any drills, that would, that's what that would do. So your legs might get stronger, different parts of your body, you might feel healthier. However, For me personally, I wasn't seeing any definition in my body at all, like zero zip zilch. And when I stayed consistent with the weights and slowly started building up the actual amount of weight and the type of workouts that I was doing, 
I was like, what? What is that? I've never seen that. That Does that look like a line by my arm? Is there a little bit of definition? And once you have something like that, and remember, like right now, I'm still, it's still a journey, right? So I'm still going, pushing forward, trying to find different things that I can do when it comes to my food intake and things like that. But I saw some definition in like in, t- in my arms and I said, oh, that's what weights do for you. Huh. Perhaps you might want to continue doing this because what do you think you're going to see in the next three months? How do you think you're going to feel in the next six months? Yes. You're going to feel so much stronger. It started to make me feel super strong. You know, like my husband would be like, hey, that, that's a little much. I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? He said, you, 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 you kind of on another level right now. So you might want to chime down, pipe down, you know, a little bit, but yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, I started feeling strong, super strong. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) My mom said, baby, what are you doing, girl? You're going to drop that weight on your head. I said, mom, believe me, I am very careful. Things happen, but I am not going to drop the weight on my head. She said, okay, just be careful. <laughs> I said, mom, I'm good. <laughs> Your routines are, man, <laughs> I don't know where you come up with where your combinations from, but they're great. <laughs> Thank Seriously. you. Thank you. Uh, all right. So you got your breakthrough moment. What's mm-hmm. your most memorable moment? Uh, I would say my most memorable moment memorable moment in my entire journey is around that same time when i really started getting into the gym um my mom who has been active for a good part of her life but my mom she i'm going to try to not get emotional here okay. she is the most she is the strongest woman that i know she has dealt with all kinds of different medical ailments and she, guess what she don't she does not it doesn't matter it doesn't stop her now she might have her days you know but it does not stop her and so what ended up happening around that same time is My son and I were very consistent. We would just meet each other at the gym. We set days during the week. My dad started going. My husband went. My mom came. And to see the joy of her being with her grandson, her daughter, her husband, all of that, after she's come through so many things in her life, was like, I don't know. It was a very special moment to be able to have that uh, with my family, you know, and to see that my mom was like, it's time for me to get back to it. It doesn't matter that she has lupus, my mom. And that's just one of the things uh, that she has had to deal with. And it does not matter. And she's like, when she can't, because you have your good days and you have your bad days. And when she can't, she does not let it get her down. She's just like, it's okay. My body's telling me, you know, I need to chill for a minute and then I can get back into it. Because again, the thing is, is that it's a journey. It's a lifestyle. It's not some quick overnight fix. And then the next day you wake up and you're going to look like something, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's about longevity, longevity. So when I saw that and my whole family together, I just said to myself, wow, this is a, this is a very, very special moment. And um, to see my mom just be in such a great space, it was a uh, very, rewarding on so many levels and um yeah yeah it was it was it was fantastic and 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 it's something that I will cherish uh for a very long time 
for a very long because everybody's getting older, right? Yeah. Everybody's getting older and um, you are not, nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. So yeah. whenever I have a moment like that, that I know that I'm going to remember forever, it's something that, you know, it, it means a lot. I guess that's the easiest way. It means a lot. Your mother and father are definitely an inspiration. That's <laughs> definitely, and you know, Thank man, you. they they definitely you are your son, your husband. I mean, I, I'm loving this. D, how do you balance a daily lifestyle with all your commitments to your life, and also committing to health and wellness? Like, how do you balance all that? Mm-hmm. Like work, mm-hmm. mother, mm-hmm. wife, everything, because that's kind of hard to have a good balance. Yeah, it is. And throughout my journey, there's been ups and downs, right? There's been times when I was like, I got 10 balls in the air and I'm juggling them and things are good and I'm feeling happy. And it just feel, felt like everything would fall into place, right? I think a little bit earlier, I mentioned even this year that I've gotten off of track. When things are good, they are great. Work is going good. You know, everybody is healthy. Uh, I'm just enjoying being a mom and a wife and a, and a daughter and a sister. And uh, it's like, hmm, how do I put it? During those times when things are not so good, it's not so good. So. This year, I was in a situation where I I had a job that was just not me. It was just not me, you know, great people, but the job was just not me. And what ended up happening is that a lot of my energy and things were just trying to keep myself in a good space mentally. And so when it came to going to the gym and doing better at cooking at home and just being like having more energy, it wasn't happening. It just wow. wasn't happening at all. I was, um, I was just off. I was not myself. I was not yeah. myself. Things have changed. God is good. Uh, when you open yourself up and be, and you are willing to receive blessings, that's yeah. when things start happening. That's when things start happening. I will say that now I am in an amazing job. I am putting awesome. myself first. Good. I love what I do. So it does not feel like it's work. It just feels like I'm building relationships with people and helping them and helping them. Right. So when things are moving like this, it is easy for me. I just have to remember that I have to put myself first. That's the first thing. My health my fitness, because then I can be the best version of myself in all of the other areas of my My professional, you know, as a mom, because neither of our kids live here. They both live in Arizona. That was a big thing for me. You know, that was because my son and I are very close. Single mom had him when I was 19. Um, We are very, very tight. So for him to move, it was like, ooh. I'm not really know how, I don't know how I feel about this, you know? Yeah, yeah. Our daughter decided she wanted to go to University of Arizona. Sure. So she is also down in Arizona. So both of the kids are gone and I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> this is different. This is different, right? Um, but I still want to have those moments when we're able to have those good conversations on the phone or yeah. do the FaceTime, or take a quick trip to Arizona, or mom, I'm coming home for the weekend. Are you sure you can't stay for 10 days? You know, <laughs> like I'm there, I'm present, I'm, I'm ready. I am, I am the best version of myself, right? And I awesome. feel as though it all is centered around taking care of you. And part Got of it. taking care of you is investing in your fitness. And your mental health, right? And I also feel as though those two things go hand in hand. Mental health and physical health 
are so intertwined that I just feel like when you have the both of them together, it's like, I don't know. Me personally, I feel like Wonder Woman, who, by the way, is my most favorite <laughs> character of all time. But yes. <laughs> That's every woman's favorite nowadays. Is it? Is it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes, I'm going back yes. to the back to the Linda Carter days. I made myself bracelets with foil, me and my sister. Oh yeah. Man, man. Did, did, mm-hmm. did you have the little rope too? <laughs> we had some type of rope. I think we used our jump rope. <laughs> <laughs> did, did what are some common misconceptions about weight management? Ooh. Um, I would say probably one of the biggest ones is that if you eat a lot of food and a lot is, can be different levels, right? That you will not be able to lose weight. But one of the things that I have learned along my journey is that your body needs fuel in order for you to do these things. And if you do not take in certain amounts of protein specifically, like you're not going to see your muscles grow. I mean, that's something I still struggle with. Honestly, to be straight up honest with you, I still struggle with finding the exact right diet because a woman's body changes. And as you get older, it changes even more. And so finding that perfect diet that is going to help me to really start to see those gains, not gains, but like more definement and things like that in my muscles. That's Mm. something that I feel is a part of my journey. So what I've done is I went to our insurance and I said, there has to be something. Is it a nutritionist? I don't know. Let me look into it. Set up an appointment. I'm sorry, your insurance doesn't cover it. I said, well, that's great. But I am a very uh, think outside of the box type of a person. So I did a little Mm -hmm. bit more digging and I found out that our insurance company offers a program called Real Ideal. And it's a group of people and you have a coach and you can have one on one sessions with your coach and they will help you with putting together a meal plan. And I am 60 days. I mean, I'm sorry, 30 days into the program. And it's going good. So it's all about consistency. We meet weekly and we talk about all things, challenges. How is your food, uh, your hunger scale? When your stomach feels like this, are you truly hungry or is it something else? Sometimes boredom. People just eat because they're bored. I'm watching TV, so I'm going to eat something. Yeah. You know, that's me. Mm-hmm. That's me. That's <laughs> I me. think probably it's been some everybody at one point or another, you know. Yep. So it, 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 it's going to be tonight, too. <laughs> <laughs> you and you know, that's the other thing that I also tell myself is you do not have to deprive yourself of things that maybe might be your favorites, right? You don't have to just cut them out and say, I'm never going to have it again. No, no, don't do that. Because a lot of times when people do that, then they start to want it more. And then it's not just that that they're having. It's, well, I can have this too. And I can have that too. And I'm not just going to have a little portion. I'm going to have a lot of, you know, a big portion. And again, it, it becomes a, a circle. It becomes a circle, right? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I feel like take everything in stride. Take everything. I'll in stride. never give up fish fruit ice cream. Never. Hey, you got to have what you got to have. Mine is uh, peanut butter M and M's. Oh, I love peanut butter M and M's. Well, I'm, I'm having some of that tonight. <laughs> Man, but that leaves me. <laughs> that leaves me well, so, what is your nutrition like? Like, 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 like you said you're on the six. You've been doing this thing for sixty days. Like. What are some foods or something that, that you, you eat now? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I really love for fish. I love salmon, but I also <laughs> like uh, cod. <laughs> you don't like fish? Nah. I mean, I'm in, I live in Seattle, so the seafood yeah, here yeah. is, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I like to make fish tacos, but I like to make everything like myself. So I just get the fish and see fish tacos. You never had a fish taco? Come on now. No. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, whoa. Really? No. Oh, you are missing out. Fish taco? Yes, you do. So there are (laughs) these little tortillas that are low in calories that I use. Just little flour tortillas like that. Okay. Get the fish. Put it in the pan. Use a little bit of olive oil. Cook it. Chop it up. Nice. Get yourself like some what you would use to make coleslaw. Do this coleslaw dressing, right? Chop up a little bit of pineapple. Pineapple. A little, just little teeny tiny pieces of pineapple. And then the kicker is my special sauce, but we can't de- talk about that because that's a secret. <laughs> and then you drizzle it over the top. And if you want a little bit of fresh guacamole on the side, I like to make fresh guacamole because it is where it's at. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 So like uh-huh. that's easy, you know, uh, protein, protein shakes are a, a good way for me to get my protein intake in. So I do that because in the job that I am in, I'm out and on the road seeing customers and things like that. So I'm not, and I have never been one that sits down and have this big breakfast. That's just not who I have been uh, ever really honestly. So I try to make sure, you know, like good little bars or maybe some granola or something like that. I do love yogurt. So uh, I will have yogurt and I, so I'll, I'll take it back a little bit. My nutrition and what I choose to put into my body has changed throughout my journey. So okay. if we go back maybe um, a couple of years ago, two, maybe two and a half years ago, I was like, my body is just like, I'm going to the gym, I'm doing my cycling, but my body is like hurting, like hurting. Like I can't. It was hard for me to walk. I would Mm. still do it. You know, obviously you have to walk, but like not as much as what I wanted to, you know, and um, just almost to the touch, like it almost my body like hurt to the touch. Right. So I'm telling my doctor, I'm like, okay, is it because I'm lifting too much? What is it? You know, like this doesn't feel like when you first go back to lifting weights and you have that pain and soreness in your body like this is something other than that yeah runs all these tests you know i mentioned my mom had lupus runs all these tests and everything comes back as nothing and i'm like well something has to be going on you know your body you really i know my body so Mm -hmm. fast forward a little bit what it ends up being is fibromyalgia so that was not what i was expecting to hear Oh. And um that is uh <laughs> painful to say the least. What so, is it though? What is uh it? it's so basically it, it, you feel like your muscles hurt, your joints almost feel like they hurt at times. Um wow. I would say I don't have rheumatoid arthritis, but I know that people that have rheumatoid arthritis experience pain in their joints and like inflammation. That is another thing that comes with fibromyalgia is inflammation. Hmm. And um, so in having conversations with my doctor, she said, I want for you to try two things. I want for you to take gluten out of your diet. And I want for you to take dairy out of your diet. <clears throat> the dairy is not really a big deal, even though I feel like I'm a mouse because I love cheese. I love cheese. But yeah, I don't too. like I don't drink milk. It's, that's just not my thing. So sure. I did that. And within 30 to 45 days, I lost 12 pounds. The inflammation in my body like went down and I was more alert waking up, you know, in the morning, like just feeling like awake, you know? Yeah. And, um, it was, it was really beneficial. So I've tried to 
keep on that same path and not really, you know, have the gluten. It's hard, but what it has helped me to do is um, learn how to be creative with my cooking and the things that I, you know, have for my normal meals. Meal planning, that's another thing, you know, that I do. I that takes it. a lot of time. <laughs> I bet it do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. D, we go wind it down, but I'm going to ask you one more question before I get into my game, which I'm going to give you the last word as well. Okay. But what was your biggest achievement out of everything that you talked about? Your ups, your downs. I mean, you, you talk about some of your downs. What was your biggest achievement in this journey of yours? What's the mm. biggest one? The one that affects you the most. Mm. Gosh, I feel like there's so many special moments, um, but the biggest one. So this is, I, I have a few, but I'm going to say this one. So my arms are, have always been like a problem area for me, but my confidence is where it is right now. So I still do what I do. <laughs> I told myself, you know, just keep pushing forward and do your videos and encourage people and um, just be who you are. And I had a person on TikTok put a comment and it basically, she said, I started seeing your videos and it changed like everything in my life, everything in my life. I now am going to the gym. And, uh, we, we just talked a little bit, you know, and she told me a little bit about herself, but the thing that happened before that was she said to me, your arms are like really impressive. And I have never thought that in my whole entire, thank you. In my, in my whole entire life, I've always been very self-conscious about it, but to have somebody say that, and that was like. Like, what, what do you do? How do, what do you do? How do you make them look like that? I just felt like it wasn't about the fact that my, my arms look a certain way now. It's just, that was something that I had always worked on and always focused on. And I never really ever saw any results. And to have Mm -hmm. somebody say that me and seeing that and asking me for advice and telling me that I changed her life was, it just really touched me. It just really touched me. I felt that makes like, me feel good, don't it? Yes, it makes me feel really good. It makes me feel really good. Again, even if it's just one person, even if it's just one person, it I'm matters. Piggyback off of that one, the self confidence. Mm-hmm. You say it's been a journey with that, right? Mm-hmm. It's been an up and down journey with that. It's probably better now than it was before, but you, but, but throughout your story here, it seemed like it like goes back and forth. Like, so how do you fluctuate with that? How do you handle that? Mm-hmm. Like, on like a daily basis with, with, with the confidence? Yeah, it, it definitely has, you know, had peaks and valleys. And um, at first, I, I don't really think that I had a plan in place on how to handle it. Um, I really was just kind of going with the flow, but I realized that I couldn't live for the rest of my life like that. Like I needed to figure it out and try to find things that, um, maybe would help me to feel more at peace and more centered. And so Mm -hmm. I started getting into, um, some yoga and, um, really just like a little bit of meditation, some grounding, just play being in a place where. I'm able to just kind of disconnect from everything, right? And at the forefront yeah. of that is putting myself first and realizing that I am worthy and I can do all things that I put my mind to. I just have to believe in me. Just I have to believe in me. And it allows me to kind of pull myself out of that rut or hole yeah. and start making my way back up. And so I really have been trying to focus on just putting myself first and taking it one day at a time. And that has helped me to keep like my self-confidence and telling mm. myself that I'm worthy because the things that I say to my class, 
when I have my messages during cycling, it's not just for them. It's for myself too, right? It's for me too. So I guess that's, that's just kind of the things. Uh, one thing that um, I am going to start doing is a little bit of journaling because I have thoughts yes. all of the time. I have thoughts all of the time. And sometimes, you know, it's good to be able to go and look back at that. And so exactly. I'm going to start journaling. I made a point to get myself a journal that was cute because, you know, I just want to <laughs> do that. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah I, yeah, I I can tell you right now, before I get into my questions, I'm going to say this, right? When I follow you on TikTok, you are strong, amazing, and your journey here, you know, just confirms that you are just amazing. Seriously, you are strong. And those combinations are wicked. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very wicked, much. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Let's get into my little 10 question game here. Okay. Let's just go regular questions, whatever. Which word, if you could only use once for the rest of your life, what word would that be? Ooh, one word for the rest of my life. One word for the rest of your life. Only one word. What word would it be? I think that word would be love. I think that word would be love. What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Ooh. Mm. There's a couple of things. No, fish tacos are good, but my mom teriyakied up some shark and made me and my sister sit at the table and eat it. And it was so oh. nasty. Yes. Oh. I will never forget that. And the other thing was ostrich. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. If you could meet Oh, anyone in the world today, anyone in the whole world, who would you want to meet? Mm. <sighs> you know, I was going to say one person, but I, I, I think I would want to meet Michelle Obama. I think I would want you, to meet Michelle Obama. Yeah. The third person said that. The oh, last yeah. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Crazy. I'd love to sit down with her. Yeah. Wow. What moment in your life would you like to experience one more time? Hmm. Hmm. That's a hard one. Hmm. Got you thinking. Mm hmm. Um. You know, it, it, this is going to go back a lot of years, all the way to. Uh, Gosh, when I had my son, it wasn't the best for either of us. It was, uh, it was, um, a lot of hours, 33 hours and we both just didn't do so well. So if I could go back to that time and make it so that it wasn't like that and that he was healthy and I was healthy and we were good right from jump, I think that that would be something that I, I would like 33 to hours. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, my mom yeah. would told you that I beat you out by an hour. She says mine was 34 <laughs> of the longest hours of her life. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. All right. D, what was your favorite toy growing up mm. as a kid? Your favorite, my toy. favorite toy. My favorite toy. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I don't know if it was necessarily a toy, but I really loved my Cabbage Patch doll, Candace Wanda. Candace Wanda. Mm -hmm. She okay. was the most beautiful little, little chocolate skin cabbage patch kid. And I brought her with me everywhere. And my sister's was a boy that didn't have any hair. And he was named Duke Dickey. Where they come up with these names? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. You know what? A side note, if you walked into the store and you mm -hmm. saw that doll, mm -hmm. would you buy it? Mm. Now, yes, I would. I would buy I would buy because you know what? The, I have my other one that I took with me everywhere. Her name is Lulu and I still have her, but I don't have Candace. So I would buy Candace. Okay. If you could have lunch with one person from history, who would mm. it be? Mm. Martin from Luther history. King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. Everybody says that. Yeah. That's you the 
fifth person said that. Mm-hmm. Fifth well, person. One hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Would you rather have twenty hobbies or one single passion? Twenty hobbies or one single passion. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like I'm passionate about so many things. So. I guess I'll take the hobbies and just be passionate about each one of them. Okay. What's a hidden talent no one knows about you? Mm. Uh, I played soccer for about 11... From the time that I was not eight. Seven. I played for about 11 years and um, I was a really good goalie. And in one of my games, I made a goal from the goal. Damn. How you do that? I don't know how I did it, but it <laughs> happened. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. All right. What TV series or movie you can watch multiple times? Mm. Rocky, the Rocky series, every last one of them have the seat, have the DVDs, have the DVDs, love them, all of them. Sylvester Stallone. Oh, for so many reasons. And did you know that he wrote all of them? Yep. Yep. I recently watched um, his documentary that he did and even learned more about him. So. On Netflix, right? I think it's on Netflix. I think it was on Netflix. Yeah, I think it was on yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. One last question. Mm-hmm. What's one piece of advice you wished you would have taken seriously? Mm. I would say. Remember to always put yourself first. And I wish that I would have stayed doing that from the moment that I was told that. Um, However, I am a true believer in that everything happens and there's a reason and that my plan is not necessarily the plan. And that, that the things that you go through make you who you are as a person. So I try to find the positive, I guess, part of that because does it's not necessarily positive all of the things but i just wish that i would have put myself first and uh gave myself a little bit more grace you know give yourself grace put yourself first see we're gonna end it with you you take as much time as you want give a message to the audience someone who's listening matter of fact put yourself first something that's like someone who has recognized your journey, your story, and take it away from there. Give it to them. Yeah. I, w- I would love to just let everybody know that, you know, <laughs> one of the most important things, especially in the world today, is that a little bit of positivity can go a long way. There's going to be a lot of outside distractions, things that like try to pull you away from your journey, try to make you doubt yourself. But I said it when we were talking earlier, you are the only you. And I feel like that is such a very powerful thing. Uh, Put yourself first, take care of yourself physically and mentally. And remember that you're not in things alone. And if you feel as though, you know, you're a little bit down or you're struggling a little bit, it's, it's, Social media is good in a lot of different ways. And I know that, you know, when you talk to people, you're not necessarily talking, talking to them, but you can find a community through social media. You can find a community where you live. You just have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone and do something that you maybe might not normally do. But there are people that are like-minded. There are people that are on the same journey as you. And they're looking for a buddy too. They're looking for a buddy too. So, I mean, reach out to me, reach out to me because I love to motivate people and I love to see people with a smile on their face. 
So that is something that I am extremely passionate about and um, it brings me a lot of joy. So just do you and enjoy life. Enjoy life because there's a lot of things out there that we all can experience and that we all can enjoy. And um, I would say just take it one day at a time. Keep on shining and keep on sparkling. That's what I say every single day. And, you know, this is something that I, I live my life by. Uh, you asked me earlier, what was the one word that I would say? And I said, love. If I had two words, the other word would be faith. Because I feel as though I even have it on my body. Faith is not something that is going to make things easier necessarily. But it's going to make them possible. So. Just have a little bit of faith, have a little bit of faith. And I would love to tell you, thank you for having me here. I feel like this has been great and uh, it's been fun just talking. Let's talk right. about it, right? Let's talk right. about it. That's what it is. Let's talk yeah. about it. D, thank you so much. This has been awesome. This has been great. Thank you for coming on telling your journey. And thank you. Please guys Absolutely. like, subscribe. Please get some comments. Yes. Reach out to our social media. I'll put it in the descriptions when it come out. Everybody have a good day. Good weekend. We'll see you next week on Let's Talk About It. Bye, Peace. everybody. Thank you for watching the show. Please like, subscribe, comment. Stay tuned next week for another exciting episode on Let's Talk About It.